right, so I, I've always wanted one of these uh, OSS Smatchets. This is the Atlanta Cutlery Museum replica. And I'm not stoked for a whole bunch of reasons. Number one, look at this ridiculous handle on here. First of all, it's not an exact copy uh, of it because on the originals, and I'll insert some pictures of it, this lobe isn't really here on this side. It's more defined on this side. This is shorter. And uh, this handle is just terrible. I mean, it's very squared off. And it's just, you can't, there's nothing comfortable about this. You just can't hold the phone with one hand. It's a little less pro than normal, which I'm always a little bit less pro, right? Made in India. And it was interesting. I put it in the sheath and I was holding the sheath as if it was going through a belt. This is on an angle, so when it's on a belt, the knife's on an angle. And I drew it out quick and it pulled this, I unsnapped it. But the guard caught on the snap and it pulled it right off. So I'm gonna try to repair that, but this sheath is garbage. I don't know what this is inside here, but it looks like it might be a particle board or something in there with a very thin piece of leather surrounding it. So it's, it's just garbage. Uh, I would recommend that you don't buy this, uh, but I'm going to modify this handle. I'm going to take these hard corners down. I'm going to remove the lobe on this side. I'm actually going to shape this for myself. I'm going to round uh, this whole corner here down. I might add a little bit of the lobe uh, for looks. I'm going to round it in this direction as well. I'm going to make this a little bit better. I'm going to pull this in tighter. I'm going to knock these hard corners down as I mentioned. And I want to talk about that in the video as we go. I'm going to insert a couple images here of handles from originals of this knife. There's a few of them on eBay now. One is over two grand. One's about two grand. One's for about a thousand dollars. And if you'll notice here on my W49, you can see that this handle tapers nicely just behind the guard here and fattens towards the rear. Um, you know, they really, they, I'll tell you, Western really knocked this one out of the park here. Both of these are what you would call like a jungle buoy bolo sort of thing. They're both designed to work in the jungle, to cut things back, work like a machete, <laughs> uh, as well as a combat weapon. And I don't know if you guys are aware of it, but the leaf blade is just extremely deadly. The wound cavity that this thing causes is nuts. But it's a great all-around uh jungle survival knife so stick around we're gonna get we're gonna get a little crazy with it I started messing with this in my kitchen <laughs> and it's just throwing too much dust so I'm gonna have to bring this back to the uh, bring this to the shop tomorrow and I'm gonna get this dialed and it's gonna be cool all right so I'm at the shop I'm about to start working on this handle we're gonna reprofile this to make it better and I wanted to show this handle right and the rear end of it and get the tape measure out just so you guys have an idea all right so we're about seven eighths of an inch width there and on the back side of this we're at an inch and an eighth so we're a solid quarter of an inch fatter on this big hunk of aluminum and these edges are they're not sharp enough to cut with obviously but they're way too sharp for your hand and i started tapering this in uh, here you have to be careful. I was doing it with a dull chisel. I mean, just wasn't honed. And if you go against the grain, you'll get a chunk. I don't mind this because that's about right where I wanted to go. And I think I showed you already that this tapers here nicely. So I'm using some of the detailing from the W49 
for this to a degree okay because they really nailed this and um, for comfort so let's just get to work I think what I'm gonna do is take a shortcut I think I'm gonna use a flap disc on a grinder and whenever you're using power you want to just go tread lightly would be the tip for you all right because really easy to cut into this and remove too much material quickly and screw the whole thing up and we don't want to do that all right so it's going to be a little slow going here and i'm going to stop for a second i'm going to put a cutoff wheel and i'm going to try to get this removed first then i'm going to get as much of this removed as i can and finish it off with files and sandpaper I'll put a grinding wheel on it and shape more of this right now. Might as well. to show you every second of this but I'll share with you kind of the thought process here I'm going to I feel like I should shorten the length to be honest with you who that is hot <laughs> hot 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 um, I feel like I should shorten the length but because the lanyard hole is there I don't have a lot of room to work with and I want to keep this lobe right here out that far as far as I can I'm gonna tighten this Ooh, that is hot I'm gonna tighten this up in here a little bit uh, to thin this down a hair <clears throat> and make the loop or the lobe rather more pronounced I mean I'm never going to mimic this exactly but I want to try to create that a little bit on there while still trying to keep the original vibe of this handle I don't want to take it away from you know, this vintage OSS smash it uh, design that they had. I'm just trying to enhance it a bit and make it more comfortable and actually usable.
This is gonna be nice. It's gonna be nice, nice. All right, this thing is leaps and bounds above where it was. Uh, I have this little block of steel a buddy of mine gave me. It's like a mini anvil. I had to peen this pin over using the proper uh, hammer this time for you guys. And yeah, so I'm just refining this at this point and I don't have to make it look super nice at the moment. I don't have a buffing wheel, if you can believe that. I'm not, I'm not really a metal guy that much. I should have one, but uh, the shop is limited space. So, but um, this is just, first of all, I think it looks cool. I mean, I do want to refine this more. Fresh piece of sandpaper here. So I would like to refine it more to make it pretty, pretty. But I can tell you in the hand, oh my God, this thing is uh, far more comfortable. You can kind of see what's going on here. Uh, you know it's going to be a good project when you've taken the time to bleed for it. So, uh, you know. All right. Let's fold this over a couple times here. Do, 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 do. using some 150 on this for the moment just enough to it's just rough enough to shape a little bit and erase a lot of the file marks um, I did go a little nuts here I created this little shape here on purpose you know I, I'll show you a close-up of that in a minute but uh, or less you, know, you guys are on video here so um, let me go ahead and finish cleaning this up a bit and then I'll give you a decent look at it but it's just a lot of hand work now. I did the bulk of the work, as you know, with the grinder, and it, uh, but yeah, man, this is, I don't mind leaving some tool marks either. I really feel like, uh, if you guys are into vintage, uh, knives, uh, that were used in the war, you'll find quite a few of them that were hand shaped a bit for the user, and, you know, that was done with whatever they had. Marines were lucky because they had ships to get on and the, there was a lot of naval, uh, I mean, every ship has a machine shop, so they did some really nice fine work there. But if you were on, a, on the land and you had some basic stuff, maybe you had a uh, construction battalion near you, you know, the CDs, or if you're in the army, you got uh, over there by the engineers and you know, maybe one of those guys would help you out where you could, borrow some of these materials that I'm using here and uh, you know, shape your handle down a bit just to make it comfortable. I mean, a knife, I'll tell you, man, there, there's technique, right? We've gone over this already and how to handle the knife, but obviously you want the thing to be as comfortable in the hand as possible. You don't want a bunch of hot spots, right? So let me get some nice tight shots of this and then handle it for you and talk about it in a moment here all right so as you guys saw earlier in the video i got to make a sheath for this still but uh you can see here a little shape to this and uh it's far more comfortable it does resemble now more a little bit more of what you saw on the originals uh, in the video uh the, the little pictures off of ebay it's not refined but you know at this point i don't really care oh my god it's so much more comfortable in the grip um i could see you know what let me, let me get in the frame here and wield it around for you a bit all right That's nice, man. I left this little bit of a bump here again, just to hint at what was there originally. I clearly, I, you can see, I took that in quite a bit there. Looks like it has a bend to it, but it, obviously it doesn't. It's just I took that in. I could take it in on a better angle here, but I like that. It just seems like it 
holds better right there, you know. And then again, I can hook this and flick it now. And it's very comfortable in the palm, you know, the way that I shape that. So a little bit more sanding. And I would like to taper this here, right here more. But that pin is right there. And these scales did get loose. I repeened both pins, but I could see popping these off making new scales that taper from about seven eighths of an inch to the blade in on an angle similar to the what you see here you know with the w49 you know, if you remember that right here and uh because this is just this is i mean i just can't can't get enough of this thing <laughs> perfect or to make that similar, I'd really I'd have to redo these scales, at least, especially with these two pins, or the one pin rather that's too close to the guard. In my opinion, that's a design flaw, but it looks like a lot of the originals had that. And you know, the fit and finish on the handle wasn't great. Anyhow, the handle was stained, which is never great. Oiling is better. It is it is a little fat here, you know, where I'm grabbing with my thumb. I can feel that, but at least I can get my hand around it now. You know, and I don't have tiny hands. I wear a large size glove. I don't have long fingers, but I got needy, needy mitts. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> needy mitts. Needy mitts, Mike. So you got some position uh, options now, which is nice. I'm telling you, the way that thing came, you saw the beginning of the video, that was pathetic. Uh, strictly designed to be on a shelf and not used, but this is, apparently it's a pretty good steel. It's a high carbon steel. You gotta oil it. And uh, let's take this thing out. Oh, some squeedos. Uh, uh, let's not cut my friggin' head off here. So anyhow, pretty stoked with that. Just trying to find a thumbnail for the video. They're always kind of goofy, right? <laughs> Anyhow, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, now it's actually usable. I'll, I'll, I'll keep refining this a little bit. Like I said, I might replace the scales. Um, but that's it right there. The OSS Smatch It World War II design. Uh, so this is supposed to be exact spec, but again, as you saw in the snapshots there, it wasn't. But pretty damn close. I'm sure the manufacturing is all still the same. And this is what you would typically see from the period, you know, flat spring steel for these style blades. Again, this was more of a jungle type thing, just like this would be a jungle type thing. And I've got a case double X coming, the original, uh, not from World War II, uh, although there is one I am looking at, but I don't feel like spending that money right now. And I've got to start making money and selling things off to afford to repair the van. I'm going to need a Jeep JK front axle. They're like three grand complete with everything. And if there's even a kit available, it's going to be like three grand. And then there's still labor and everything else because I'm not doing it. I'm not to pay a shop to do it. I'm too busy. And I'd be, it would take me 10 times longer than a pro shop to do that. Um, if you're in Southern California, you can find me a deal on an axle or something like that. Let me know. I'm on the lookout. I've got bikes that are worth a couple grand a piece easy. So I'll probably be selling off some stuff here pretty soon. Uh, anyhow, I just thought you guys would get a, again, I'm a, I'm a knife guy, as you guys know, but I'm pretty proud of that right there. And it's going to get better. You see how that looks like it's lifted there? This was, it was flared out equally on both sides. Now, I might take this down straight here, but I kind of like the way it's feeling in the hand like that. So who knows? I won't. I really shouldn't do too much more to this until I take it out in the field and start chopping with it and see how it really performs. One of the things I need to do with the van uh, when I go out and about is have some sort of work table. I was thinking about that last night with a vise and everything so I can do my own shaping and stuff when I'm out in the field with it. So I know I'm going to be reprofiling some of these handles and blades and being able to sharpen and everything else. Um, that's coming. So thanks again for being here. Do your best to be good to one another. I know it's hard sometimes. And uh, I'll catch you guys in the next video.